Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos and on this video tonight I am going to be giving you some early team news for the Manchester United Sheffield United game Wednesday 6 o'clock kickoff. Uh, don't forget this morning I did give you my preview for the game. Now obviously you know, we'll know some more of the team news uh, when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does his press conference. I think he will be doing his press conference tomorrow building up to the game. So we are awaiting updates on Alex Tuanzebe and Phil Jones because you know they've been recently out with injury. Uh, Tuanzebe and Phil Jones did miss the 1-1 draw with Tottenham on Friday. Missed the 1-1 draw with Tottenham on Friday. Also, too, we are awaiting uh, news on Victor Lindelof because I heard that Victor Lindelof limped off towards the end of the 1-1 draw with Tottenham. But like I mentioned on my recent video, I actually you know, think that Victor Lindelof, you know, may be dropped in this game against Sheffield United, even if he is fully fit. Because, you know, Victor Lindelof wasn't too good against Tottenham. You know, like I said, he got caught out far too many times on the counter-attack and he struggled at times in that back line. You know, Victor Lindelof, you know, he's still a very, very good centre-half and, you know, this has been now his third season at Manchester United. You know, we did get Victor Lindelof from Benfica um, in 2017. You know, we did pay around £30 million for him. You know, struggled for that consistency in his first season, but I think, you know, last season, this season, a lot of aspects of his game have really, really improved. And he has, you know, been our first choice centre-half alongside Harry Maguire. But Bay, you know, now could get there ahead of Victor Lindelof. Uh, but yeah, we have got a fully fit squad, you know, apart from two hands, Bay and Phil Jones. But, you know, they could be available for selection. Obviously, you know, they are first choice anyway, uh, are two hands, Bay and Phil Jones. Um, obviously, you know, a bit of, you know, Sheffield United team news as well. Um, of course, uh, Jack O'Connell, um, I think, is injured for them. Uh, don't forget John Egan. Um, he is suspended for the game on Wednesday because he did get sent off in Sheffield United's 3-0 defeat to Newcastle yesterday. Um, also, too, they've got David McGoldricks. Um, I think he's um, also a doubt as well for Sheffield United. Um, I think also, too, Phil Jackie Elka has recently uh, sustained an injury. Uh, don't forget, you know, Dean Nenson isn't going to be playing in this game. So, yeah, but uh, I think Chris Wilder has actually, you know, done his uh, press conference today for Sheffield United. So, they have got a few, you know, players out with injury. So, you know, that is some early team news. And I think, you know, Paul Pogba um, has got to start this game for Manchester United. Definitely in that he should have started against Tottenham, should Paul Pogba, but I think Solskjaer uh, give the main explanation why he decided to bench Paul Pogba. I think he will start on Wednesday against Sheffield United. You know, it's time, you know, for Paul Pogba to go alongside Bruno Fernandes, you know, in our midfield. Uh, Paul Pogba, you know, did really make an impact uh, when he came on against Tottenham, you know. Don't forget, you know, he was the one that got us the penalty. You know, late on and Bruno Fernandes had converted that penalty. You know, so you can say in the game against Tottenham on Friday, it was Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba that had salvaged us that point. Now, like I said, you know, when Paul Pogba came on on Friday against Tottenham, that was his first appearance for the football club since the former win against Newcastle on Boxing Day. And it was his first appearance in 176 days. Uh, you know, I don't think Paul Popper started a game now for like 265 days or something like that. The last time he started from the start for Manchester United was back in September. But I think, you know, Paul Popper, you know, can definitely, you know, finish the season on a high. You know, we need to play Paul Popper alongside Bruno Fernandes because I think, you know, they're capable of, you know, getting us Champions League football. And I think Paul Popper alongside Bruno Fernandes in our midfield is definitely, you know, the best midfield partnership in the Premier League. Like I said, you know, Bruno Fernandes is key to Paul Popper's future. You know, because, if you know, if the midfield partnership does work out, which I think it will, you know, Paul Popper will end up signing a new long-term contract at Manchester United. Uh, as it stands at the moment, of course, Pogba has got like, is it a year or just under a year left on his contract? But the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. Paul Pogba is one of the highest paid players at Manchester United. You know, he's on just under 300 grand a week 
on his current contract. He is our most expensive signing, Pod, because we did pay £89 million for him. But I think Pod Bino can make Manchester United a force again. We know he's going to stay with us for the remainder of this season. I think he's going to be staying next season as well. But that's if we know we do exceed expectations, because if we don't exceed expectations, that may want that may convince you know, Paul Popper to leave the football club. Like I said, you know, he had a long running transfer saga. You know, there was narratives about Paul probably going to Real Madrid. You know, there was also talks about him going back to Juventus because Pob Bino did endure four good years with Juventus. Four good years with Juventus. Um, also, too, there were stories about him going to PSG. There was also stories about him, you know, going to Barcelona and all of that. But now his future has more or less been resolved. You know, I think, by the way, um, Paul Pogba shut Graeme Soonis up recently as well. Because, you know, Graeme Soonis has been criticising Paul Pogba a lot. You know, not only Graeme Soonis, you know, Roy Keane, you know, has been one of Paul Pogba's biggest critics throughout the course of this season as well. I know the vast majority of his performances at Man United have been totally comparison to his ones at Juventus, but, you know, he's still an exceptional player, as you know, Paul Pogba. You know, Paul Pogba, you know, wants to experience winning the Premier League and the Champions League with us. You know, so far he's won the Europa League and the League Cup with us. So, yeah, so I think, you know, Paul Pogba, you know, will start this game against Sheffield United, you know. Um, my verdict on uh, Bruno Fernandes, you know, he's been an exceptional signing for us. Um, the goal he scored against Tottenham on Friday from the penalty spot, I think that was now four goals. He's also provided four assists since he came in. And I think in every Premier League match, or nearly every Premier League match, Bruno Fernandes being given the man of the match. He won Premier League uh, Player of the Month for February, reflecting on his good run of performances. And definitely, Bruno Fernandes has made the difference in this team. We got Bruno Fernandes in a deal with around £65 million, with add-ons included. And Bruno Fernandes, you know, did sign a five and a half year deal at the football club when we got him in January. But definitely the sign of Bruno Fernandes has saved Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job at Manchester United. You know, just we need to keep Bruno Fernandes in that number 10 because obviously, you know, he's more effective there and that's his predominant position. And of course, you know, put Paul Pogba in the number eight. You can put him as a six, but I prefer Pogba as the number eight and, you know, put him at Tom Way as the number six and all of that. So um, there you go. But um, I do believe uh, Solskjaer you know, will definitely you know, make some changes um, from the 1-1 draw with Tottenham. I think he could make around three or four changes. Um, some other news as well regarding Manchester United. Now that Jesse Lingard, Brandon Williams and Juan Mata are all available for this game, I think, against Sheffield United. Uh, they didn't play any part in the 1-1 draw with Tottenham. There was unused substitutes. Um, I don't see Lingard playing any part against Sheffield United. You know, Lingard is probably the worst player that Manchester United have got. And Lingard has found game time very, very difficult anyway uh, since, you know, Bruno Fernandes came in. You know, Lingard's one of the players that I think we're going to sell in the summer transfer window. Uh, Brandon Williams, you know, he could play a part in the game um, against Sheffield United. Uh, may, he may not start, but, you know, I think, you know, he probably, you know, will come on as a substitution. You know, with Brandon Williams, you know, maybe Juan Mata could play a part in it as well. Um, of course, Juan Mata, you know, doesn't really play now for Manchester United. You know, he's basically used as a backup. But, you know, when Juan Mata does play, you know, he can make a fantastic impact. You know, Juan Mata's been a long-serving player at the football club. You know, this is now Juan Mata's sixth season at Manchester United. You know, we got him in 2014 from Chelsea for the round. Was it just under 40 million or was it 40 million? We got him under the David Moyes era. You can play Juan Mata as the number 10. You can also play him on the right-hand side. I think he is now in his early 30s and that. But yeah, so I think the changes Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to make, I think, you know, like I said earlier on, I think Lindelof will be dropped and Bay will come in. I think uh, Fred will be dropped in this game. He won't start, I don't think. And I think Pobre will, will obviously you know, come in for Fred. Possibly, you know, Matic could start as well. I think, you know, Greenwood will start this game against Sheffield United. You know, I think he'll come in for Daniel James. I think Daniel James will be dropped in the game against Sheffield United um, on Wednesday. Because uh, Daniel James, you know, wasn't too good. 
against uh, Tottenham on Friday night. Um, for the vast majority of this season, we have been playing Daniel James on that right-hand side, but you know he's actually no more effective from that left-hand side. I think Daniel James has played around 38 games for us this season in all competitions. You know, so I think you know we will drop Daniel James. Um, Igalo, um, I don't think he'll start. Um, he'll probably you know come off the bench again. We'll add in Igalo because I did say, didn't I? Igalo's starts will now be limited, you know, because obviously Marcus Rashford is back from injury. Of course, add in Igalo's. It confirmed the other week regarding Igalo. Sorry that we extended his loan for a further seven months. So he's going to be at the football club until the end of January 2021. We have no option to buy a Garlo. There is no obligation to buy him as well. So after his loan spell with us, he will go back to Shanghai Shnu. But before the football season got suspended, he did really, really well. I think a has got four goals in, like, is it? Nine appearances for us. Um, he did come on in the Tottenham game and actually, you know, did very, very well. You know, Greenwood also came on in the Tottenham game and, you know, made a fantastic impact, you know, had that chance, you know, towards the end. Had that chance, you know, towards the end and that. You know, so, yeah, you know, definitely no Solskjaer will make changes, you know. What formation um, is Solskjaer going to go with? Uh, what formation, you know, is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer going to go with um, in the game? I think in the game on Friday against Tottenham, he went with the 4-2-3-1 formation. Solskjaer has been changing formation persistently this season, but on a regular basis, he has been going with that 4-2-3-1. You know, a few times, you know, he's gone with a 3-4-1-2. Um, I think in the games against the likes of Chelsea and Man City, he went with a 5-3-2. And I think a few times he's gone with a 4-3-3 as well. But he tends, you know, to go with that 4-2-3-1 formation. Yes, you know, this is what, you know, he does go with and all of that. Uh, some Manchester United fans um, have actually, you know, said that Martial needs to stop starting. But I think Martial, you know, will start the game against Sheffield United. He'll play in that central position because Martial has been playing in that central position this season. It's not his predominant position. But he's actually you know, looks very, very effective in that central position this season. I've got to make an admission, he has done very, very well under Oli Gunnar Solskjaer as Anthony Martial. Uh, he was in a good vein of form before the football season got suspended. He wasn't great against Tottenham on Friday. You know, he had you know quite a couple of uh, good chances, but you know he was pretty quiet in the game. You know, this has been what Martial's fifth season now at Manchester United. Like I said to you, I think one of the best seasons Anthony Martial enjoyed was his debut season under Louis van Gaal era. You know, we did get Martial, was it, for around £36 million, potentially rising up to 57 or £58 million based on goals and achievements. We got him as a 19-year-old and he's now 24. You know, so it's going to be interesting to see how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer approaches this game against Sheffield United on Wednesday. Um... Obviously, you know, there's a lot of United fans as well saying that David De Gea does now need to be dropped. Um, I have got to agree on that um, aspect because obviously, you know, David De Gea has received criticism. Uh, don't forget, you know, David De Gea was accountable for Steven Bergwijn's goal on Friday, but also to Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw. They were also accountable for it as well because Luke Shaw shouldn't have edited it on for, for it to lead to that attack. And... Harry Maguire, you know, should have trapped Steven Bergwijn down. You know, Steven Bergwijn basically turned him inside out. But you heard Roy Keane, like I've mentioned on my recent videos, he said, you know, Pogba, uh, sorry, De Gea and Harry Maguire, you know, should get the taxi back to Manchester. He said, like, David De Gea is overrated. And he did say, you know, he's sick to death of the goalkeeper. I think also to Roy Keane mentioned that, you know, if he'd have been the manager, he'd have, like, punched him in the face. He said something uh, like that anyway. But he does need to be dropped, does David De Gea, but we know that he's not going to be for the remainder of this season. He's going to be our number one goalkeeper for the remainder of this season, is David De Gea. He's going to be our uh, number one goalkeeper because obviously, you know, Dean Henderson is out on loan at Sheffield United and he's going to remain on loan with Sheffield United for the remainder of this season because Chris Wilder's con Chris Wilder confirmed that, you know, Sheffield United and that, you know, were close to extending his loan. You know, this has been Dean Nensen's second season on loan with Sheffield United. And he has been their player of the season. 
Um, Dean Henderson has had quite a few loan spells. You know, he had one at Stockport, Grinsby and Shoresbury as well. He had loan spells there. He has got a contract with us until 2022 as Dean Henderson. We won't get rid of Dean Henderson permanently because we do see him as a long-term replacement for David De Gea. You know, don't forget Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did say recently that Dean Henderson will become England's number one and Manchester United's number one goalkeeper in the future and all of that. But he is the long-term replacement for David De Gea, is Dean Henderson. And he's still, you know, very, very young. We've obviously, you know, uh, got other goalkeepers as well. You know, Romero, you know, he's a pretty decent goalkeeper. You know, he he plays in um, a lot of our cup games, you know, does Romero. But obviously, you know, he isn't reliable enough to become our number one goalkeeper. So, like I said earlier on, you know, Solskjaer's got a big decision to make on, you know, David De Gea. He really, really hasn't that. Um, I still think, you know, David De Gea is regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the world, you know, reflecting on what he's achieved at Manchester United and, you know, he has won individual awards and all of that, reflecting on his good, you know, performances. You know, he's been a long servant at the football club. This is David De Gea's ninth season at the club. He's approaching now his 10th year at Manchester United. I said recently, didn't I, that David De Gea's transfer is inevitable. Uh, if we do sell him, we won't sell him in this summer transfer window. We'll sell him sometime next year. But if we do sell him, we'll definitely get more than the £17 million that were paid for him from Atletico Madrid. I still think we could maybe get around 40 50 maybe £60 million for David De Gea. You know? And, you know, if he does leave Manchester United, I think he will make a return back to Spain. He began his footballing career in Spain. He's, he was born in Spain. And don't forget, back in 2015, he was close to joining Real Madrid, but due to the fax machine, the deal never materialised in that because Real Madrid were in for him for so long. And David De Gea is on 375 grand a week at Manchester United. You know, he's the highest paid goalkeeper in the world and he's the highest paid at the club and he is in his late 20s, is De Gea. He signed this new long-term contract last year. Yes, he did in that. Signed his new long-term contract last year. But in the last couple of years, you know, David De Gea has been a liability, reflecting on the mistakes he has made. So some United fans will want to see him dropped for this game against Sheffield United. You know, they do uh, want to uh, see him dropped and that. But like I said to you know, on my uh, recent videos, didn't I? You know, there's decisions that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has obviously got to make. You know, he's got a goalkeeping decision to make. You know, facing a bit of a dilemma at left back as well. You know, I think for the remainder of this season, Luke Shaw will remain our first choice left back. But I think maybe next season, you know, Brandon Williams uh, could be um, our first choice left back. Um, also, too, um, got to address that midfield. You know, Solskjaer's got to work out his best uh, midfield trio. I think our best midfield trio is Bruno Fernandes, Pogba, and um, Tom Inway. But, you know, United fans have got different, you know, perceptions on it. You know, Solskjaer's got to make a decision on Martial and Daniel James as well. So, there's quite a few decisions he has got to make. Put into the equation, he's got decisions to make in the summer transfer window. What players he's going to recommend in. And, you know, of course, what players he is going to offload. Because Solskjaer's already got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended in. But he's looking to get more rid of more of the deadwood in the summer transfer window and all of that. You know... And probably, you know, has got a tactical decision to make as well because in the game against Tottenham, uh, more or less got um, it right. But I think he tactically got some things wrong and tactically, you know, got some things correct. So probably, you know, this is something, you know, Solskjaer, you know, does need to work on and that. But yeah, you know, we need to win this game against Sheffield United on Wednesday. Um, obviously, you know, to keep our top four ambitions alive. Um, as it stands at the moment, I think, what are we, fifth in the Premier League? You know, we're now five points behind Chelsea because, you know, Chelsea recently beat Aston Villa by two goals to one. You know, so I, I don't even think we've got to win the game on Wednesday. I think, you know, we've got to win every game now until the end of the season. You know, we have got eight games remaining. And I did say to you, didn't I, you know, we've got the easiest running out of all the Premier League teams. And I did say out of our eight remaining games, we should win at least six of those eight remaining games and all of that. But we've definitely now got to win on Wednesday. You know, top four is a priority for us because we do want to get qualification for the Champions League for next season because, you know, it will help us have a competitive summer transfer market. Uh, plus, we'll generate money as well if we get qualification for the Champions League. 
Uh, it depends on Manchester City's two-year European ban because, of course, um, if they get it upheld, their ban, then you know fifth place is a Champions League spot. But if they don't, then we'll obviously you know have to finish in the top four. And that there's a few teams in that top four race. Uh, you can say now Arsenal are in it, you know, to be quite honest with you. But yeah, uh, we've also got other priorities as well. You know, definitely, you know, the FA Cup and the Europa League are two priorities for us because that's a chance of us winning two trophies under Solskjaer this season. If we could win the FA Cup in the Europa League and get in the top four, you know, that would be a fantastic achievement for Solskjaer and Manchester United. We've got Norwich um, in the FA Cup at the weekend. That's the quarterfinals. In reality, we should get to the semi-finals, you know, because Norwich obviously, you know, very, very poor, the bottom of the league. Um, of course, we're more or less into our last eight of the Europa League because, you know, we're 5-0 up against last from the first leg. Um, the game against Norwich at the weekend, um, you know, Solskjaer and all obviously, you know, made changes after, you know, the Sheffield United game. He's obviously, you know, played and all of that, you know. You know, but the FA Cup is definitely you no know, priority for us. So Solskjaer, you know, will definitely, you know, take the FA Cup seriously in that. You know, he really, really will. But yeah, so I'm convinced, you know, we can beat Sheffield United on Wednesday. You know, you saw my predicted 11 this morning, you already know that. You know, you saw my score prediction for the game as well. I think Manchester United are going to win this game by three goals to nil. You know, we have got a good record against Sheffield United because we have won our last seven home games against them in all competitions. I think we have beaten Sheffield United on 44 occasions as well. Let's put that into the equation. Uh, the last time Sheffield United beat us in the league was back in 1973, was it 2-1? And I think the last time they beat us overall was back in the FA Cup in 1993 and all of that. Um, we did play Sheffield United, by the way, um, back in 2016 in the FA Cup. We beat them 1-0 and that was under the Louis van Gaal era. Um, of course, if Sheffield United were to beat us, then obviously, you know, they would go a point ahead of us because, you know, we're two points ahead of them at the moment. I don't think Sheffield United will get qualification for the Champions League, though. But, you know, what achievement it would be uh, from their perspective, you know, if they was to get qualification for the Champions League. But I don't see that happening. I really, really don't see that happening. The reverse fixture between Man United and Sheffield United, of course, was 3-3 at Bramall Lane. Um, of course... We was 2-0 down in that game. You know, we did show good determination to get back into that game against Sheffield United. You know, we, we was winning 3-2. Uh, we scored three times in seven minutes, but we did concede later on. So it did end 3-3 and all of that. But I've got to make an admission regarding Sheffield United. They've enjoyed an exceptional season um, in the Premier League. You know, by the way, this is uh, their first time in the Premier League since the 2006-07 season. You know, no one expected Sheffield United to be in the position that they're in, you know. And you've got to, you know, admire Chris Wilder, you know. He's progressed them all the way from League 1 to what, 7th in the Premier League. You know, I think this has been Chris Wilder's fourth season with Sheffield United. You know, I think Sheffield United is the fifth club in his managerial career because before he was at Sheffield United, he was, was, it, was he at Oxford, Northampton, Halifax, and I think he began his managerial career at Alfred Town, you know, the Chris Wilder. And, you know, Sheffield United have got some players that could cause us problems. You know, I think probably one of their best players is Norwood. You know, like I said, they've got McBurney. I think he's scored in the reverse fixture. They've got McBurney, they've got Norwood, they've got um, Musset. Is it Lynn Musset, if I've pronounced his name correctly? They've also got that John Fleck um, as well. I think, you know, he also scored in the reverse fixture. You know, Sheffield United have also got Billy Sharp. I think they've got Lundstrom as well, if I've pronounced his name correctly. So they have got, you know, quite a few decent players. You know, they've also got Jack Wadwell. Have you know Sheffield United, but you know I'm very very convinced you know that we can beat them at Old Trafford and all of that. But really really looking forward to the game. But since you know the season um, resumed, you know Sheffield United haven't done so good in their you know last two games. Of course, like I said, they lost three 0 to Newcastle yesterday. That was a surprise. Uh, the drew nil 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 with Aston Villa last uh, week. Um, Sheffield United though will feel as though they were robbed in that game. You know, but it did, you know, end nil-nil and all of that. It did it. 
he did end, you know, nil-nil and all of that. I uh, just want to say, by the way, Harry Maguire will be reuniting with Sheffield United because, don't forget, you know, Harry Maguire is a former Sheffield United player. Um, I think he actually, you know, began his career at Sheffield United, Harry Maguire, you know, when he was a lot younger than that. So, um, there you go. Um, you know the news on all of the transfers anyway. Um, I give you uh, the news on the transfers earlier on today. Uh, you know the news regarding Jaden Sancho from Borussia Dortmund. Um, of course, Borussia Dortmund have revealed their asking price. You know they have said that they want ninety million pounds for Jaden Sancho, and you know this could be tempting now for Manchester United to get him. It was Christian Fowl, the German football expert. Um, he was the one that announced that you know Borussia Dortmund have said they want ninety million for Sancho. Uh, Borussia Dortmund recently played RP Lesbig and you know they did win 2-0 Sancho was benched in that game uh, Borussia Dortmund have given the main explanation why he was benched because you know he wasn't energetic and he was very tired but Sancho also tweeted that his head is already with Manchester United so I think he's revealed that you know he wants to come to Manchester United does Jadon Sancho you know there was reports coming out the other week from the Telegraph saying that Dortmund want around £150 million for Jaden Sancho and that. You know, you had Lucien Favre, um, who's a Borussia Dortmund boss. He said uh, that Sancho could still leave in the summer transfer market. Uh, Sebastian Kale, Borussia Dortmund's head of football, he said earlier on this month that Sancho, you know, could still stay at Dortmund for at, le at least another year. But we want to get a deal over the line for Sancho because he's our number one priority target. You know, he's obviously not the only player on our agenda and he's not only our priority, one of our priority targets, you know, Jack Grealish. He's another one of our priority targets as well. Uh, we've also looked at a few alternative, alternatives to Jack Grealish and Jaden Sancho and that, you know, we've looked at Leon Bailey from Bayer Leverkusen. He's available for around 40 million. You know, we've looked at Ansemane Fati Vieira from Barcelona. I'm going to fully disregard him now coming to Manchester United because, you know, he's no interest of leave, leaving Barcelona and plus we'd have to smash our transfer record to get on Fati. You know, it said we'd have to pay 350 odd million for him because he's going to be signing a new contract and a release clause of 350 odd million is going to be put in that new contract, you know, for Ansu Fati Vieira. You know... You know, Jude Bellingham, um, he's now not coming to Manchester United because he's, he's decided to join Borussia Dortmund. So I'd say now, you know, he's out of the equation as well. So there has been, you know, so many players on our agenda. You know, I give you the news regarding Alexis Sanchez earlier on. So, yeah, but it's going to be interesting to see how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer approaches the summer transfer window. Of course, the summer transfer window will be Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager. Because so far, Solskjaer's enjoyed three transfer windows at the football club. Didn't recommend anyone in, in his first transfer window, but in the two previous windows, you know, he's recommended five players into the football club and spent, you know, just over £200 million on them. You know, Solskjaer, you know, did say that he wants to make around three major signings or four major signings at the end of the season. Because he believes we need this, you know, to become title contenders next season and all of that. I don't think, you know, we're going to make three or four signings in the summer transfer. Window. Maybe we could make one sign, you know, maybe we could make two signings. I heard the other week that our transfer budget got revealed. He said Solskjaer is going to be given around £269 million or £270 million to spend in the summer transfer window. Now, if that that's the case, that should be enough for us, you know, to get the right number of players in. Don't forget Solskjaer's already identified the areas in the squad where he does want to strengthen up. You know, he's already identified the areas in the squad. Uh, don't forget, you know, our net debt is uh, just over 429 million. That got confirmed um, for when the football season was still suspended. It got confirmed around three weeks ago, I think. But our debt had risen up by almost 130 million pounds and all of that. But, you know, Solskjaer knows for the summer transfer window, he's got the backing of Ed Woodward and he's also got the backing of the Glazers. You know, don't forget Ed Woodward did say that we, will do business, we won't do business as usual in the summer transfer market. He said that the other month, but he said, you know, we will remain competitive in the summer transfer market and all of that. But, you know, I think we can enjoy the perfect summer transfer window. I did say the other week the vast majority of our top six rivals may not even be in the summer transfer market. 
due to the financial issues and that. Uh, Chelsea, you know, they've done really, really good business so far. You know, they've obviously, you know, just recently signed Werner from Lesbic for around £48 million. They signed Hakim Ziyech in February from Ajax for around £37 or £38 million. Pounds. You know, they've recently been in for Kaya Havertz. You know, I think Ben Chirwell is Chelsea's number one priority target as well. So it'd be interesting to see how we approach a summer transfer window. We're going to get rid of at least five players. And, you know, I've got an idea, you know, of the players that Solskjaer is obviously, you know, going to get rid of. But I did say, you know, next season, our expectations will be to challenge for the title. Because this has been now the seventh season we have failed to mount any kind of title challenger. So that just indicates how inconsistent we have been for the last seven years or so. You know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. So the last time we won it was in Alex Ferguson's last season and all of that. You know, that's the last time Manchester United, you know, won the Premier League. But hopefully, you know, we can get our 21st title under the Solskjaer era. Um, even if we um, weren't to finish the season on the high, or even if, you know, we weren't to get qualification for the Champions League, I still think Solskjaer will be given another season at the club. You know, like I said, because it is a transition period and all of that. But he's still got expectations to exceed for the remainder of this season. Like I said, you know, we've got to win the FA Cup or the Europa League. And of course, you know, we need to, you know, get Champions League qualification. And that, you know, we really, really do. Solskjaer's been at the football club now 18 months, or just over 18 months. And like I said, you know, I have taken positives, you know, from his tenure so far. Like I said, he's recruited five good players in so far. Um, our record against the big six sides this season has been very, very good. We've taken 17 points against the big six sides, 18 points, sorry, against the big six sides this season. And overall, you know, I have seen improvements under Solskjaer and that. He's promoted the youth very, very well, like I mentioned. Um, so I have definitely now seen improvements under him. Uh, we have made a lot of mistakes in the last seven years. Uh, that's one of the main explanations as well, why we have been so inconsistent in that. But we haven't dominated English football since the Alex Ferguson era. You know, Ferguson enjoyed 26 years at Manchester United and, of course, won a total of 38 major honours, developed a lot of young players. One of the worst decorated managers of all time, definitely. No one will uh, achieve what Ferguson achieved at the club, so no one will replicate his legacy and no one will last as long as Alex Ferguson, you know, did. But since he retired, you know, we have been playing catch-up. You know, we've had different managers with different philosophies. You know, we spent close to the billion pound range on players. So there you go. So that's everything to update you with today on this video. Um, Solskjaer's press conference, I think, will be tomorrow. So I'll be giving you my reaction to his press conference. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update of today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care, God bless, and I'll see you guys all again tomorrow.